Hello, everyone. Welcome to our April 2021 Rapid Webinar. I'm Katherine Bergman, a Guided Pathways Regional Coordinator in the San Francisco Bay Area here with the SF Bay Area team, Amal Amanda Issa, Dr. Sunny Green, and Dr. Laura Lara Brady, joined by our special guests who we'll introduce in just a moment. In our region, many colleges had questions about how to map college pathways with data and technology to ensure learning learning and socioeconomic equity for their students and our communities. Our Bay Area team joined with our regional consortium and center of excellence to learn together about pathways to socioeconomic equity. We were honored to partner with WestEd to learn more about their team's research into LMI and competencies. And we were so excited to connect and learn from our colleagues and colleges moving from theory to action in the Inland Empire Desert region. Accordingly, I'm so grateful this Friday to pass the mic over to our colleagues from the Inland Empire Desert Region, Guided Pathway Regional Coordinator Leslie Valmonte, who will introduce today's webinar. Next couple slides, please. Welcome and happy Friday. In today's exciting office hour, we will explore how a California community college is using data, technology, and a healthy dash of boundary spanning as a Guided Pathways equity tool. We will hear about next level integrative structures and supportive ways the college is collaborating with data, technology, and partners to provide for their students. And we are excited to hear how the opportunity mapping tool and data resources from West Ed, represented today by Dr. Rachel Antrobus, was leveraged by this college community. It is my honor to introduce the Chafee College team from the Inland Empire Desert Region, beginning with Angela Burke Herrick, Professor of Biology, Trelisa Glasatoff, Faculty Trainer and Instructional Designer, Matthew Marin, Director of Intersegmental Partnership, and Melissa Sackenfong, GPS Counseling Coordinator and Associate Professor of Counseling. Lastly, we will conclude with a general Q&A. So please use the chat to let us know your questions and share your thoughts. This is your time to learn with and from each other. So let's get started learning from today's featured college teams. Team Chafee, the mic is all yours. Thank you so much. Uh, nice to meet all of you virtually today. Uh, we start this story with the four pillars of guided pathways, which we all know very well, and the timeline that uh, Chafee took um, to lead us to the point that we are now that where we'll be presenting on the tool today. Uh, so our pathway, like many colleges, began in uh, creating curricular pathways to employment and further education with program maps and uh, course sequencing. And then of course, uh, in order to clarify and help students stay on the path, like many colleges, we still continue to work on reimagining student supports, counseling and interventions such as success teams. But the pillar that has, I think, caused the greatest degree of uh, consternation and that there's a lot of uh, gaps around is the ensure learning pillar. Um, and part of this is because of the fact that uh, the student journey to employment doesn't tie directly to programs of study. We found from our research um, across the state with West Ed, as well as through the Guided Pathways teams, that a program of study like psychology, for example, doesn't necessarily lead to a job in psychology or a business degree, an associate's business degree leads to a myriad of different types of management positions across the employment sector. So how can we ensure that the learning that happens is intentional in the classroom in a program of study to the labor market when there's such a gap between the linkages between the names of those programs of study and the types of employment that students encounter? So the guiding question we had was how can we tie learning in programs to the labor market? And one of our uh, Hypotheses is, well, what if we focus on the cross-cutting skills that employers say they need and that we know are happening in the classroom, but aren't necessarily at the forefront of learning for students in terms of what's visible to them. So our timeline was uh, related to the New World of Work statewide instructor training, which was a digital badging initiative offered across the state to certify employability skills that employers had uh, stated that they were interested in students learning and for colleges to certify uh, through instruction. And the way that this project uh, took off was that the state um, uh, community college foundation 
offered opportunities to train faculty in employability skill uh, curriculum and that colleges would offer that curriculum in face-to-face -face modalities through non-credit and students would receive digital badges for these employability skills. Uh, at Chafee, we kind of uh, redesigned this work using CVC OEI grant funds uh, in the spring summer of 2020 because uh, the trainings, the statewide trainings for faculty to, to be uh, to be certified in New World of Work um, came to an end. These New World of Work skills fall into 10 different categories uh, that have been developed through through vast research with um, other skill initiatives throughout the country and with employers. And um, what it provides is the state, uh, what it provides across the state and 115 colleges is a common language to talk about uh, skills and within each one of these skills to talk about outcomes that students uh, can attain that can tie to the learning that exists within a classroom. So for example, with collaboration, the four learning outcomes are working as a team player, finding common ground, shared responsibility, and dealing with conflict. But keep in mind, as I stated before, that in order for a faculty member to issue these badges through the current uh, New World of Work system offered by the foundation, they would have to be trained through the official statewide trainings and the students would have to be uploaded into a centralized system uh, of Concentric Sky Badger Pro, which is the platform they use for these badges to be issued to students. And then the students can use the badges on their LinkedIn account. And when employers click on them or students click on them, they'll open up a digital briefcase of information from the issuer about what they uh, attained in order to earn that badge. But that process of training and certifying faculty and having a required statewide certification training um, for us was, uh, was, was somewhat of a barrier. So we worked with the chancellor's office and the foundation to uh, rethink how we might be able to do this at a local level and scale it up so, uh, the, so that the badges could be offered within the, at the institutional level. And I'll hand that off to my brilliant colleague, uh, Trilisa Glazatov, who really was the architect and visionary behind the, the technological sides of this work. Thank you, Matt. So when we uh, started to think about how do we reframe the new world of work and integrate these employability skills across the curriculum, there were a couple of things that, that really guided us. The first was, how do we effectively call out and uplift all these skills that the students were developing and demonstrating in their courses? And then how do we measure the success and impact from all of this? So the tool is really a deliberate system of, of people, of processes, and of technology. And so that tool needed to reflect the student's learning experience, which means it doesn't just happen in the classroom. It happens across the campus, in the career center, in counseling, in tutoring, at the library. So how do we reflect what the students uh, experiences across campus. So we needed a tool that was adaptable, that could be aligned to what was happening in different areas of the campus. We also needed a tool that was able to capture all of those artifacts that the students were showing as part of the mastery. Um, we wanted to make sure that we use what we have. We have internal experts, we have systems, we have counselors and faculty and administrators and staff who are already doing this work. And so we really needed to tap into that knowledge and uplift it. And so we created this community of practice that could really focus on how do we propagate this across the campus? How do we make it work best for what we do here at Chafee? Uh, we also have systems. We have a Canvas LMS that everybody is using across the campus. So we have to use the systems in order to capture that data and streamline the process. And then the last thing that we were looking for was creating and using tools that would help us make some informed, equitable decisions, as well as to measure that impact and success and award the badges and celebrate the students. And, and so that's where that Badger Pro comes in and that's where tools like Tableau and other data visualization tools come in. Next slide, please. So what does this framework, this tool, this process looks like? This is a high level 
review of that process. We took the new world of work outcomes that have four learning outcomes attached to each skill, and we uploaded that to the system-wide canvas, right? The, the, the system level, not the course, but the system. And that allowed our faculty to pull in those skills that were most aligned to what they were doing and focusing on in their course. And they aligned it through their rubric, which is already part of the process. So now they have their rubric, they have their assignment, they can now give feedback and assess students with, with the skills that they are demonstrating. What this allowed us to do on the back end, since we integrated these skills at the system level, now we have some rich data. Now we can pull from Canvas and not only award badges to students across the curriculum, but we can also measure impact because the data is so rich and so granular, we can disaggregate that data and focus on what is best, to, best needed to support our students and how can we also use this, this data to really just, re, just reform what we're doing across campus and at the system level. Uh, next slide, please. So we have a quick video to show you the process of how simple the process is. All right, so this video is gonna show you from a faculty perspective, how do I find the outcome and then align it to the assignment via the rubric, right? So you have a selection, you attach it to the rubric, you can either grade it or not grade it, but you can still assess it. You can still provide feedback. And then you update your rubric. It is as simple as that. And if you do that at the course level, now on the back end, we can pull that data across the curriculum to see what's happening, what's happening across the campus. So this is part of that data visualization tool, that data reporting tool. This slide shows us across the curriculum, what skills are being assessed. So this is the magnitude of the skills being assessed across the campus. How are faculty aligning learning outcomes to the work that students are doing and practicing in their course, right? And so this is a great tool to identify what skills are working, are working well, whether we can clearly see and what skills do we need to kind of contextualize a little bit better for our students and, and understanding how this goes from theory to practice to career. Next slide, please. And because we have that rich data, that granular data, we can now focus on the student. It is it's not this high level abstract general number. We can show how the students are progressing on their path and how best can we support them on their path, right? And so this slide is a great visualization, lots of color that shows where the student is along the path of earning that badge for that particular skill. Okay, so I'm gonna pass it off. Next slide, thank you. Thanks, Trey. This is Rachel from Westhead. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, to Dre's point, we know that the goal of most community college students is to get a good job. And I, I love that how student-centered Chafee has remained. Um, community colleges like Chafee are designing pathways that Chafee calls academic and career communities that provide opportunities for students to explore their academic and career interests and gain the kind of skills that they're, they're talking about with New World of Work um, in ways that don't waste time and, and resources for students. Um, in order to aid colleges in these kind of efforts, um, Westhead's created a free, simple web-based tool that we call the Opportunity Map Builder. I would say lovingly refer to as the Opportunity Map Builder. Um, it makes it easier to access the kind of jobs data um, that um, is useful in these kind of efforts called labor market information or LMI, if you're familiar, um, to inform colleges' guided pathways. It pairs jobs data with information on educational pathways and essential skills um, to help colleges 
better connect students with the in-demand skills in their region. We really feel strongly that these kind of data, uh, um, using them across guided pathways can really help your college increase the relevance of um, programs for students, no matter which path they choose to take. Um, we wanted to give a quick, um, I'm just gonna give a very high level um, overview. Oh, I forgot one, here we go. Um, <laughs> these are the kind of ways we thought uh, the Opportunity Map Builder could be most helpful. It can help you aid in the uh, selection of programs to cluster within meta majors, um, which has happened at some colleges that we're working with. They also help define learning outcomes um, at the course program and institutional levels, which is similar to what chafee has been doing. It also has a lot of potential and has been used um, to inform advising, coaching, and counseling services more on the student service side. And also very importantly, create the kind of bridges with K-12 and adult ed and non-credit programs that we know are really critical to student success and equity. So now we'll take a quick look. Let me, let me show you. Um, so when you first land on the dashboard, there, you'll be looking at a view of all the programs and occupations and skills across California. I've um, selected for Chafee here, but there's either the, the college view that you can select your own college um, by top code. You can do all or select the ones that are important to you, for you to look at as a program um, or meta major level, or you can uh, use these pre-designed uh, tabs, which is a, a CSU meta major, tab or a generic tab. Um, once you choose the filter, it's gonna adjust all the, the tables on the dashboard, including the occupation and skills tables, um, which have, has been um, linked using um, crosswalks uh, developed by Centers of Excellence. Um, since we're hearing about Chafee's work um, that's located in the Inland Empire, let's choose that region for the regional education options table, which is the one below. If you, if you choose the region um, where you're working, you can see the other options at other colleges, um, that are in that similar view. We've, we've chosen here um, social and behavioral sciences. So you can see the other programs that exist in other programs, uh, other colleges in the region. Um, once you choose that, you're gonna see the occupations down below at the very bottom tab. Um, and, and again, we've selected for Inland Empire, so you can see what's going on in Inland Empire. You can also select for the level of um, education attainment to see what kind of jobs exist, um, as well as the, the starting salary. You also see that all the jobs are hyperlinked. Um, these are hyperlinked to ONET um, occupational pages. So you can see the, the deeper level of competencies that are required. On the right side um, of the Opportunity Map Builder, you're gonna see these two skills tables. They're gonna automatically adjust based on the occupations that you chose below at this bottom table here um, for the top skills that are showing up in the data. This is the kind of data that Chafee was interested in when we started meeting with them um, several months back uh, that is really uh, helping to work on their employability skills work. Um, we're working hard now on another revision of the tool um, and the more up-to-date version will have even better skills data. So stay tuned for that. Um, you can find all of this on our website. Uh, the, the resource, the tools, we've also made static maps for the um, 11 top common meta majors in, across the state. And then also there's an explainer video as well as a, a number of other re free resources. So this is our new project um, website. We encourage you to check it out. Um, and I'm gonna hand it over to Angela. Hi everyone. Um, I We are really excited. And so I wanna pick up with how we're gonna use that data that Rachel just talked about at Chafee. Um, and our hopes is for doing this this fall, but we wanna build it into our meta major conversation and, and, and those planning conversations. And we call our meta majors academic and career communities. And so we wanna use those opportunity maps to get people thinking about which employability skills um, each kind of correlate the top three employability skills that correlate with each of our meta majors according to the data that's been scraped um, using the opportunity map. And so I just showed it's a preliminary figure that we're working on to facilitate that conversation on the right hand side of your screen. You can see our six um, meta majors on the left and those three dots next to the meta major title are indicators of which employability skills appear most frequently um, for careers associated with each of our um, academic and career communities. And so we really wanna use this to get faculties talking about, um, to identify if there's gaps between using the data that we can gather from uh, the using the tool that Trey built 
uh, that data, like here's what's being used in these uh, different meta majors and courses in these disciplines. And um, here's what the job market wants, right? Here's what they need for their career in these areas and to identify where those gaps are and then think about how to, um, where are they learning these skills in their curriculum? If they aren't already, how can they intentionally embed some of those um, skills in the curriculum? And then also outside of coursework, how can we offer other opportunities for students to practice these skills? And next slide, please. And so we really want to go from where we've really started is just kind of getting faculty engaged when they see how easy the tool is that um, Trey built, <laughs> they're just embedding and kind of going to town. And then we want to intentionally integrate it into across campus into our existing structures and processes. Um, so beyond those academic and career community conversations, we're also, we've been working on a crosswalk between the, our institutional learning outcomes and which employability skills um, speak to those institutional learning outcomes and through that process, um, gathering data and disaggregating by program um, re related to implementation of the NWOW tool um, for each individual program. And that's for CTE and non-CTE. We're really trying to break down that silo and then from there also um, look at how in our general education, so non-CT general education courses, the skills that students are learning there really to kind of bring that to the forefront and help students see the relevancy of the general education learning they're engaged in. And not just students, but help, help employers see that relevancy and to help students communicate that through the badges they've earned in job interviews, on their resume, right, to show off that they've developed these skills and, and, and be able to communicate that. And then I'll turn it over to Melissa to talk about the kind of her perspective. Oh, last slide, if you can go back one slide real quick, there. Um, and so through all these efforts, you know, I realized that there was an opportunity for student services, um, uh, you know, as well as like um, inst instructional support. And so there was a lot of things that was happening on campus. And even when we mapped, we mapped with um, services that paralleled students' academic um, experiences. And so as you know, Angela and Matt was going through this experience with NWOW, we, I was thinking there was, a, there was a huge opportunity that we could capitalize on. And as you can see, there was some of the things that were happening on campus in terms of our, our ACC planning um, that kind of meshed really well with this experience. Next slide, please. Um, and so our timeline really works out like this. So this current semester, we've been looking at um, building that institutional uh, learning outcomes to the NWAL outcomes, as well as um, coordinating with our OAC, so our Outcomes and Assessment Committee, um, and then working with Rachel. So, and then what we were looking at is we also have community advisors or faculty, otherwise known as faculty advisors on campus who's currently going through a phase of revisioning right now. Um, they're looking at all the different ways that they could use this new structure that we have on campus um, to also help students explore. That's another piece that we're working on um, that really meshes well with what's happening with um, this project. And so we're really thinking about that co-curricular experience and those activities that are happening that we could utilize um, what has been built here to, to capture what that means for students and then to badge them as well, because we're thinking holistically about a student's experience. Um, you know, research has shown that most often student, what they experience in the classroom um, is not matched up very well with what they experience um, with non-academic support services. And so as much as possible, we're trying to mirror their experience in the classroom, outside the classroom. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on this fall. And then by spring um, and summer 2020, 2022, um, we're looking to have students earn their digital badges with both classroom experience and non-classroom experience. And then we're hoping that our faculty can connect through program learning um, and to workforce preparation. Next slide. 
questions? <laughs> that was a lot. That was a wonderful. Oh my gosh. There's, I feel like there's a million questions. So it's hard to figure out which ones to ask. Um, but yes, it looks like we have a question in the chat and for everyone on the call, please feel free to put your question in the chat and we definitely have time to get to them um, during this time. All right. So we have a question for colleges that want to develop or replicate something similar. What funding streams are necessary or can be leveraged to develop and sustain efforts? And I think, Matt, you might have already kind of touched on this. I don't know if you want to go ahead and repeat that and add a little something. Yeah, so you see a kind of grab bag of, of uh, restricted funds and soft funds there. And, and I think uh, the lesson, you know, for, for us at least has been instead of looking to where the funding streams are um, and what uh what funders are looking for instead to kind of set our compass for what we want for students first and then to bend the funding streams to that end and uh and so with that in mind rather than chasing you know small grant initiatives here and there we've stayed focused on like okay this is our long-term plan and we keep connecting whatever current funding streams are available when we see crosswalks to that purpose. So it's been an evolution that really started with CBC OEI CTE funding, but you know the, the main crux of that grant was not focused on this. We just you know crosswalked it over. Um, and then our Title V grant, which focuses on GE reform, we're able to crosswalk that over and strong workforce program because uh, of the non-credit curriculum and the connection to New World of Work uh, in in strong workforce, which uh, the two are have been connected across the state and the re in the strong workforce region uh, programs, we've been able to crosswalk that over as well. And and we're at this point where we actually have um, we've we've like created too many streams of cash flowing into this project, and now we're really trying to like okay, just just focus it because there uh, it's become a gravitational pull of money actually, which is which is good and also uh, surprising. I'll, I'll take any gravitational pull of money <laughs> to make any programs work. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, let's see, are there other questions? We don't have any in the chat, but I wanna see if um, folks have it who are listening in who just wanna unmute and share a question or a thought. I have a question um, and it might reflect I might need a little more understanding reminding of how all of this worked, but the skills that um, some of those came from employer needs right expressed. No. Yeah. Yes, so i'm just curious if there's a way to sort of validate or close the loop and understand that what we think we're building into the badges and the skills are in fact meeting those needs as the employers viewed them or. I mean, yeah, I love all of this. It's great. I just am curious about, you know, closing. No, up. I love it. You're actually previewing the next the next year's presentation, which is mm -hmm. uh, we're we're in the works right now building a second tier of employer verified badges, so that after students um, attain these in their classroom assignments and their their course instruction, um, we're building a non credit curriculum that will allow students to in their workplace, no matter what their job is, uh, to build a relationship between a faculty member and an employer, just like co-op ed often facilitates, but instead in this case, it has more intentionality because the employer is certifying the student um, uh, completing, working on uh, these, these skills, demonstrating competency in these skills. And you know, while this is, certainly more of an art than a science, like all learning, um, at least it gets us in the direction of starting to put some language um, and some structures to what we often talk about uh, as like an ethereal effect, but we don't ever really engage in direct contact and uh, and conversation with the employer about. So exa you're exactly right. That's exactly what we, uh, we, we aim to do next for sure. And if, and if I can just add another piece that we're working on is kind of, we are currently working, I think Matt and I are in a group that is, that is kind of thinking about how to restructure those typical advisory committee meetings, not just around CTE, but certainly in that CTE component and kind of have parallel alignment of the type of data that all instructionals programs use 
for program review, we want to incorporate the employability skills there, but also kind of standardize the use of that type of data. Um, our local, here's what's happening from the tool that Trey had, as well as here's what industry mm -hmm. says you want, and to build that into the conversation on the advisor, CTE advisory um, meetings so that we have the employers kind of seeing what we're doing. It's kind of like an outreach, but also that feedback loop where they can say, ah, the data isn't showing that we also need this one. And, and right, and we get that feedback loop with our mm -hmm. faculty, between faculty and the regional employers that are on the advisory boards. And I, I also would just chime in to say that the one of the major innovations that I can see with Chafee's work would be that they're getting more faculty to be involved in conversations about employability skills that otherwise probably didn't see themselves. That's kind of one of our original assumptions with the tool that we've worked on with West, at WestEd has been getting more of the faculty to um, see their role as being um, uh, one to develop um, both skills and career interest and competencies. So um, it, it probably uh, most likely, I would imagine with the tool that Matt's describing for the next set of badges would be um, uh, having deeper dives with employers, because a lot of times what we've seen that as a, a national study that we've been working on is that employers don't usually know what they need. So the idea, Sorrel, that they're like, they're so clear and that we're just not meeting the need is, is, is also a bit of an assumption that we have to push in on a bit, um, that this really takes building relationships with employers that takes time and also it obviously has ebb and flow in terms of what they're needing. Um, we've found that colleges that have been successful with building employer relationships are ones that start with maybe a CTE program that's meeting a very um, short-term need and then building that employer relationship over time to maybe look at the labor arts students that they hadn't thought about or look at the bio students they hadn't thought about because they're not, they're, a lot of times employers are not um, sure about what those skills are or the kind of um, employ, employee that would best suit their, their, um, their culture and their company. Thank you. I think I, there was a question that might have been addressed in the chat, but I, I feel like it-, it And it Trey was, is for hire also, if any other colleges <laughs> want, to, want to implement. <laughs> Um, let's see, there was a question um, from Natalie, uh, and I think Rachel might have addressed it, but I'm wondering if you guys want to bring it up again. Um, now I've lost the question. <laughs> it was, um, do you use the top three technical skills for ACC slash meta majors and do common skills play a role? It, it's actually what, we're, what, what we ended up doing is um, the opportunity map addresses both. If you saw it had the common skills it, when April was showing the dem demo as well as technical skills. And what we did was kind of look at both of those and decide for the top skills, which areas um, of new world of work. So even if it was a technical skill, if that technical skill kind of related to one of those, we assigned it a new world of work category for I mean, one of the easy connections is that digital fluency, if some of the tech, technical skills involve particular software program um, usage, then that's an easy crosswalk to put that into digital literacy, which has to do with knowing which tools to use and when, right? So it's kind of a general employability skill um, as all the NWOWs are, but some of the technical skills do, we categorize them in, into that NWOW framework. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Um, <clears throat> we have another question from Catherine. Um, and I don't, Catherine, I don't know if you want to read it because um, you have some, you're giving some compliments out there. Um, <laughs> Abba is, she's so excited to hear about your team's collaboration, wants to ask about the GE uh, competencies, what has or will be looked at in your community for students, faculty, and staff. And have you thought about K 14, um, adult ed, non credit? There's a lot in there. It's in the chat to, to see the whole image. Matt, you frame it really well. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, I'll give it a shot. I just <laughs> want to say my internet is so spotty oh, okay. right now. So, um, uh, so yeah. Why don't Why don't you? I think I think you might be a little bit more stable than me. Okay, I can definitely take that. So we are in the. Hmm, I guess the way Matt frames it is we you heard when he mentioned the Title V grant that it kind of centers around GE reform. 
Um, and But rather than kind of take that direct approach that tends to inspire resistance around like, why do we need to fix something that isn't broken, um, right? Around that GE conversation to kind of shift it around these employability skills. So this is kind of aspirational work or what we imagine will naturally flow as more and more faculty across all areas, right? As that's embedded into program review and everything else, we're gonna see much more widespread use um, of those assessment of those skills. And then that will facilitate conversations around the curriculum in certain disciplines and how they're addressing and which employability skills. And, and the hope is, right, the United Curriculum in a GE category, it'll just kind of naturally flow to what do we want to prioritize in here and which of our courses help us prioritize not only certain content, but also these employability mm -hmm. skills. So it's kind of our way into that conversation to look at some of those GE categories um, that'll be more organic rather than seeming like this top down, we need to clean things up. Yeah, and I, I want to also say that faculty have also been introduced to this concept in various ways. And it kind of started when we mapped um, and we built out our, our academic maps. We asked them, you know, what types of general education courses best support learning with these other courses that they've identified as like their priority courses to finish the program. Um, and as, as much as possible, we've been kind of asking those types of questions around you know, to get to this objective. And so they've been introduced to this concept on several levels. And even this semester, we're doing work around um, what is, how do we get students that are exploring within this community to advance um, and choose a program? And so they're taking that deeper dive into what, is, what does it look like for, for the competencies in this GE area, but in a variety of ways. I would also add that um, our ILOs are our GE outcomes. And because we are doing a campus-wide assessment of ILOs uh, through New World of Work, we automatically do a campus-wide assessment of GE. And we can kind of instead, and we can inductively then move to broader conversations about GE categories using ILOs as a reference. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we have one question. This is kind of like looking forward um, in this work. What challenges does this team anticipate as you move forward with this initiative um, within with, with the initiative this year? What are some things that you're, you're kind of like looking into the future and thinking about as you pursue this work? The end of transcripts and grades <laughs> um, and Carnegie units. Uh, across the country and the world, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, I like I honestly at the at the end of this, what's so wonderful is that this is a only a value add for students is certification of accomplishment, whereas transcripts and grades, right? Because it shows competency, it badges knowledge and and skill, um, but it doesn't badge failure, and so grades carry with students like a criminal record, and it's a ridiculous punitive system that we have. And so if we can use tools like this to outshine those old dusty oppressive tools, then, then we'll be all much better off. And I don't, I guess I want to, for this audience, be realistic and just kind of highlight the, the piece that Matt, Matt said, it's a value add. So we will encounter resistance and we have encountered resistance. So it's not like it's smooth, completely smooth sailing, but because this is simply a value add, because that tool that Trey built is so easy to use now that everyone has to use Canvas and everyone has experience in Canvas, we can take that as an opportunity right? To just say, well, why not? Like, why not just add it? You're teaching this, right? Right now, our message to faculty is you are already teaching these skills. Find mm -hmm. and drop mm -hmm. that rubric in. You're already mm -hmm. grading them. You don't have to assign points mm -hmm. for this 
assessment if you don't want to, but you're already grading those assignments. Just add those pieces in and it can help students because they can get these badges and it's simply a value add. And that is what helps overcome some of that pushback that we'll see in a variety of areas, but really it's just a, a beautiful tool, right? It mm. is competency-based assessment of learning. And it's just, I, you know, Trey mm -hmm. gets like all sorts of cheers for building mm -hmm. such a tool that is so fabulously easy to use that it's almost irresistible, but not entirely. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking around, I'm like looking at faces and realizing mm -hmm. the pictures because I'm trying to see are there questions mm -hmm. in the audience, you know? Mm -hmm. oh, I got my teacher vibe going. Um, there was one thought I had. Oh, do we have a question? I, I do have a question. Perfect. I, I, this is Carlos at Growing Human Achievement. Great work, people. Very impressive. Um, what are what are what are your thoughts about how we can support other campuses in the Inland Empire to to begin to work with the with the West Ed database and and look at the, what what Chafee has done and. And, and, and begin having conversations so that we could begin to spread it out. What are people's ideas about that? I mean, money is really good. Um, I, think, uh, I think there's a really nice nexus between the strong workforce funding right now and the employability skill work. And so uh, that encompasses both what um, West Ed is doing and uh, the new world of work. Uh, tool, so or or any any way that a college wants to configure the integration of employee skills into their curriculum, um, that basically fits the frame for the Region Nine Strong Workforce. Uh, uh, I think it's P eighteen project, um, which is open up for grabs for Strong Workforce funding, and as we know that those funds uh, are rolling late, and so a lot of colleges haven't been able to spend. Uh, what they intended to spend uh, when they received those local funds. And so then there is regional money on, left on the table uh, to be picked up. And so, um, you know, if you can, if you can start generating resources to support the work just from a few champions on campus, uh, that can enable and facilitate, um, you know, extra pay for faculty to help uh, build it further, but it does, mm -hmm. you do need a few champions on campus who want to put in the work regardless of money um, because they have the vision and they're, they're able to work through the politics of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I echo that second piece because not only is money important, but the human capital needs to be there because there's a lot of things that, um, you know, happens at the campus and college level that you know, requires lots of just navigation. Um, and then the other piece is that systems thinking that needs to happen. There was a lot of networking that Trey was able to kind of work through technically, um, but then that needs to be connected at the institutional level. So mm -hmm. both are extremely crucial. And we're just I, wrapping up, go oh, ahead, Angela. Oh, I was just gonna really quickly say, um, and then kind of on the faculty to kind of get that interest level going, um, just think about professional development, even if they're voluntary, voluntary, right, about integrating employability skills into your curriculum. It gets them interested. And we had had a lot of that, but it did never scale. We could, didn't go to scale because there wasn't an easy way to assess that it was happening. And, mm -hmm. and right. And so just kind of, I, I kind of think of it as there's all these different ways, parallel pathways to kind of get it going. And mm -hmm. what's super exciting is we're starting to see that convergence right now um, mm -hmm. with, uh, with West Ed data, right? And, the, and what's happening um, at Chafee. And it's just uh, and it, really exciting. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Great responses. Rachel, did you have anything you wanted to add there? I was just going to say, I, I think these were great ideas and I, I wish I was taking notes, but I'm glad it's being recorded <laughs> um, because I do think we have other colleges that want to kickstart. In fact, I'm seeing a, a few folks on the call today that are interested in using 
um, more labor market information to inform their work, but they don't know how to um, uh, systematize it the way that Chafee's just done some really efficient um, uses of technology that I think are really smart, um, that are free and accessible to colleges. So I don't, I think it's, I, when I started working with um, with uh, the team from Chafee, I said, I, I, I would love to share what we're learning and what we're doing. And with the um, understanding that you're gonna go and share it with other colleges because colleges speak, other colleges speak. And no matter what many of us say, it won't be until a college says we, we're doing it, we're using it, it's working. We're seeing students be interested in this. Um, it's It really is gonna take a few pilots like that to really see how it's affecting um, the culture in the colleges as well as the impact on students that um, just the accelerant that you all have used technology combined with obviously you have a sense uh, a group of leaders and champions across the campus um, but it's it really was I think I feel like it was like a perfect um, alignment that you all are, are lining up but I would echo what, what Matt said earlier about strong workforce I think that that funding is um, is incredibly flexible but I think a lot of colleges aren't thinking about it in this way of aligning it with guided pathways um, and maybe it, one one place to start um, was uh, the maps that we originally started with were the static maps to just start conversations with faculty about their um, alignment with other programs in their college that they might have not thought about. Um, we have we have lived in a CTE versus transfer environment for so long that um, we're not really thinking about employability uh, across our whole campus. If you ask the average English faculty, they're not you know all about it. But I, I think um, um, Angela is a biology um, faculty. I know Natalie from Foothills on here. She teaches humanities. It isn't that it's not um, known. It's just that there isn't a lot of systems in place to help scale. So I think it's about colleges having a few tools to start these conversations so that they're not kind of staying on their own because I, I think there are people on campuses that are ready to have them. You said it. It's I always feel like the, the skills are in the classrooms, whether it's known or not. But now we have tools and ways to really elevate that because every moment in the classroom, everything where students are learning is building towards something bigger. And I think tools like this can really help everyone see their role in that student experience and really um, just feel that much better about it. And, continue to improve the experience for students all around. So thank you. I'm so excited about this Chafee work. This is incredible, the West Ed tool. We dropped the link in the chat. We'll make sure to do that again. I'm gonna pass it on to Catherine um, for some last words. Thank you each for attending our April a rapid webinar on Chafee College's mapping efforts within a guided pathways framework using data and technology tools, including from partner Westhead and the amazing Trey. We hope that the information brought to you by our amazing guests is a help to your college as you do this important equity work for your students. A special shout out to our Guided Pathways Regional, regional Coordinator colleagues from the Inland Empire Desert Region, Leslie Valmonte and Angela Ibarra. Thank you both. Um, we look forward to connecting again on Wednesday, April 28th. Next slide, please, for a double feature. The first will be at noon to highlight Cypress College's use of technology to support their guided pathways and K-12 mapping efforts. And at 3 p.m., Skyline College will highlight their intentional work integrating counselors into their meta majors. Next slide, please. We want to thank each of you for your commitments to their students and their success and safety. Please be well and have a really good weekend.